My name is Oliver, and I'll be presenting our work titled Methods for Evaluating the Fluency of Automatically Simplified Text with Different Hard of Hearing Adults at Various Literacy Levels. This was done in collaboration with my colleagues, Jessica Trussell, Matthew Watkins, Su Yan Lee, and Matt Unerfalf. Automatic text simplification consists of computing techniques that make text simpler to read, and accessibility research has explored its use to support the reading tasks of different user groups, including deaf and hearing adults, because of the diversity in literacy skill. As an emerging technology, evaluation of the output of automatic text simplification systems is still an important aspect in the field, and there are various characteristics of that output that are of interest to researchers. First, as the main goal of these systems is to make text simpler, one characteristic that is important to evaluate is whether the texts are indeed simpler. And prior methodological work at our laboratory had identified metrics that are effective to evaluate this characteristic among different kind of hearing adults at various literacy levels. However, as it happens with any automatic system, automatic text simplification technologies may introduce errors in the process. In the context of automatic text simplification, these errors could be grammatical and affect the grammatical correctness or fluency of the output text. So the fluency of the output text is a second characteristic that is of interest to researchers who want to evaluate the output of automatic text simplification technologies. Now, evaluations of fluency have traditionally been done with native or expert readers as a proxy because of the lack of methodological research on how to evaluate fluency among target reader groups which means the groups for whom automatic text simplification systems may be useful. But research suggests that readers' literacy skills may affect their perceptions of a text's fluency. So it is important to identify whether it is possible to evaluate the fluency of automatically simplified text with target reader groups, such as deaf or hard of hearing adults with diverse literacy skills. And if it is possible, it is also important to identify which metrics can be trusted to identify differences in a text's fluency. So our main research question in this study is, if we have texts that we know are at different levels of fluency, can a metric distinguish these different levels of fluency when evaluating those texts with different interfering readers? As a methodological study, we needed to carefully engineer texts to achieve varying levels of fluency. So we began this process by selecting text from Newzella, which is a website that provides news articles in their original non-simplified versions, but also human simplified versions of those articles. And so we first processed the non-simplified versions of the articles through two state-of-the-art automatic text simplification systems. We then broke down the articles at a sentence level and asked two native English speakers to provide grammaticality and readability judgments for all the sentences of four versions of each article, the two versions obtained from the automatic text simplification systems, the original versions, and a human simplified version from Nozella. Finally, we use those sentence level judgments to algorithmically combine sentences from the four versions to obtain three final versions of each article, all with the same level of complexity, but with three levels of grammatical fluency. Now, the metrics we evaluated in our study included metrics identified from the prior methodological work in our laboratory on how to evaluate whether simplified texts are indeed simpler. We also included metrics from other methodological work on how to evaluate other linguistic technologies among deaf and hard of hearing adults, and also from prior work evaluating automatic text simplification systems with expert readers. These metrics included reading speed and comprehension questions that varied on their level of linguistic complexity and participants' predictions of how, how well they had done on the comprehension questions. We also asked participants to provide subjective judgments of readability, understandability, grammaticality, and system performance. Our method was informed by the prior work in our laboratory on how to evaluate whether simplified texts are indeed simpler among deaf and hard of hearing adults. More specifically in this case, to see if a metric could distinguish fluency levels, participants first read one version of each of the articles that we had carefully engineered to be at different levels of fluency. Then, participants responded to the metrics that I presented in the previous slide. Our 29 participants also completed a standardized literacy test, which allowed us to group them in two groups based on their literacy skill, and we analyzed the results from each group separately. When analyzing the results for each metric, some metrics may have been able to distinguish certain fluency levels, a difference that we had engineered to be true, 
and this would suggest that this metric works to evaluate fluency. However, some metrics may not reveal any differences, suggesting that this metric would not work to evaluate fluency. We investigated several metrics in our study, but I will present the results from the best two metrics. First, the participant's reading speed was able to distinguish the low fluency condition from the medium and high fluency conditions with participants in both literacy groups. And participants' reading speed was significantly higher in the higher fluency conditions. This is in contrast with our prior methodological work on how to evaluate whether simplified texts are indeed simpler, where reading speed was not able to distinguish that characteristic. Then, grammaticality judgments consisted of five-point Likert scale items, with responses going from strongly disagree to strongly agree to the statement, this text was grammatically correct. These were able to distinguish the low and high fluency conditions among participants in both literacy groups. This suggests that if reading speed is not available in a particular experimental design, grammaticality judgments can be used instead. Our paper also presents the findings about whether the literacy levels of participants influence their responses to these metrics. For instance, whether lower literacy participants tend to give lower overall response scores. But more details regarding our analysis and results for this research question are provided in the paper. The key contribution and takeaways from this work include empirical evidence suggesting that the fluency of simplified text can be evaluated among deaf and hearing adults at various literacy levels. We also provide methodological guidance for which metrics are capable of distinguishing the levels of fluency of simplified text with deaf and hearing adults at various literacy levels. What this means is that any researcher who wants to identify which questions to use to determine if a text fluency has been damaged by the use of automatic text simplification, they can find which questions to use and trust when doing these evaluations with deaf and hearing adults at various literacy levels. There are many limitations and avenues for future work outlined in our paper, but a key avenue for future work is studying if we can evaluate a third characteristic of the output of automatic text simplification systems with deaf and hearing adults, which is the preservation of meaning in the output, given that semantic errors may also be introduced in the simplification process. We thank the National Science Foundation for supporting this work, and we'll be happy to address any questions. Thank you.